Welcome to Atletico TV's community segment. As you know, it's my favorite segment. Get to bring somebody on who has done something in the community that is influential, that is positive. And this is a big time guest that we have. This is a big time person that we have. There's no one in the soccer community in my lifetime that has done more than this man. Uh, with the, it's not just the national championships and all of that he's building, but the alumni that have gone through his programs and stayed with the game of soccer in some capacity and carried on those soccer nutrients down to the next generations and the generations. And it's been really exciting to watch. This man has built an alumni, a family, and that is what I'm really big on with programs is building for family. And Pete Sorber, we just want to say thank you for coming on to our early new soccer show at Letico TV. And uh, we really appreciate that. And also, your right-hand man sidekick, Matt McVeigh, that decided to come on in and jump into the camera. And Matt has been with the program since Pete and uh, been with St. Louis Community College. And Matt will probably have a few words to say as well about his experience playing for Pete. So, Pete, thank you for coming. Welcome to the show. Well, it's nice to be here. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but we're going back to the beginning when I was started out or the success we had at the Valley. But the Valley comes from being at the right part of the city at the right time. It just happened to be strength in, in getting talent that was coming out at that time that filled all the schools, UMSL, uh, SIU, SLU, Rockhurst, and all that. Matt was there from the start. Uh, he was watching soccer when I was playing, and then he came to the Valley and was a part of all the teams and has been with the coaching, too. So it's always been in good hands, not just mine, but a lot of others. And the alumni that you have built there, and uh, you stay in touch with all of them still, right? Well, not no, not all of them. There's some, if they came in here right now, I'd be asking you what their name is. I wish they had their name <laughs> on their forehead or something like that. But uh, at one place or another, you bump into somebody all the time, and it's been uh, a real pleasure to see that they're recalling the time that they were there and thought it was a, f a, a f fun time to be. Seeing uh, soccer change over the last 40, 50 years, what is your impression of soccer in St. Louis now? It's still the same. Soccer is a very simple game. All you can do is get a little better at the movements and the things that you do with, the, with your foot and the ball and whatever. You might be make it classier, you know, Messi's better today than uh, it was played in my day, but you're still doing the same thing. They're just doing a better job of it. Yeah. And uh, what do you enjoy most about the professional game now? Like, do you have a, uh, you obviously watch uh, the Champions League. Did you watch the Champions League at all? Yes, I watch everything from the, when they broadcast it, I turn it on, you know. But uh, it's always good to see what is new and what the level is. You know, you might think that, well, we're getting better than we ever were, and that's probably true, but the guy on the other end, he, he's better also, so we're still st many steps behind. And this is a good opportunity. You know, the show is for coaches to learn more. The show is for young players to learn more about the game. With you having all of your experience, um, some things you've told, talked to me about, uh, about coaching, can you elaborate on uh, when to shut it down? That was one of the things that have kind of stayed with me in training. When do you shut training down? You know, when do you stop it? Remember those conversations we had last month? Well, when you get into training, uh, I think every coach has a different opinion as to how much you should, how much time you could spend on this or how much you time on that or, or where the weaknesses are or whatever. Some people are very organized about it. That was never my way of looking at it. I never wanted to go too long. I never wanted to make, have to perform uh, practices and stuff uh, if the players didn't like what we were doing and all that. Uh, I didn't want to overwork them. I wanted it to be fun, that they were anxious to come out the next day and do it again. And I respected their opinions on everything. I, I, I didn't, just because I said it didn't mean it was gospel. You know, I, I wasn't afraid to say to him, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me know and we'll, we'll say it again or something like that. But it's a very simple game, and I try to work the problems or whatever that we're working on 
I try to work that into a, a, a scrimmage type of practice. Uh, you you can be <clears throat> you can be working on three or four different things at the same time because when we're all when they're playing they're happy they like to do that just to set up cones and run around and and, that, and with a clock and all and do it how many what a number of them I, I don't like that and I don't think they do but uh, you can as long as they're playing or having fun if you have a problem I can tell you what I want out of you that day and, and if she has a problem I tell her so we can be scrimmaging and you're only going to do what you're supposed to do, and you're supposed to do the rest of us are just playing the normal game. But what you're doing blends in with this rather than make everybody try to correct your fault and hurt your fault, See, that type of stuff. So I make it fun, make it not too long, and uh, I've been very happy that it's turned out that well. And then everything I know about soccer, I learned from Pete. So he's taught me everything I know but he hasn't taught me everything he knows. Um, and then two things that I came away with is, is, is a classic line is he says, if, if training is too good or too bad, shut it down. Because if it's too good, you want to save it. And if it's bad, it's diminishing returns. And then the other thing that he said in, in training and that, that I, I took to heart is it's not fun if you don't make it fun. That's really good stuff. And that, that's exactly what I wanted you to share with them because that was something I immediately wrote down and have now implemented it in our trainings, you know? Okay, so your son works for uh, LAFC. Are you a huge fan of them? Wait a minute. What's... She asked about Michael working on Michael's team. Oh. And, and, or she says, are you a fan of Michael's team? Yeah, yeah there's no doubt about that. <laughs> Maybe too. Yeah, I, sure, I sure better be. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's. Uh, I wish it was. Uh, the team was in St. Louis. The fact that he's in L.A. I don't. If I go out there once a year, I'm lucky. Uh, L.A. is L.A. is a tough place to visit. Awful lot of traffic and all that type of stuff. But it, it's fun to see and talk to him about what their problems are when they have problems, and uh, to tell him, you know, that I think they're doing fine when I think they are, you know. But uh, it, it's a nervous time too because, you know, like, uh, Matt was telling me today, <laughs> coaches are hard to be fired, you know. So uh, if it's not going well, then I, I have to be getting a little nervous. He might be coming home, you know. He doesn't sleep too well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He lives and dies with him. Like, I can say that. Cause, and he, is, he doesn't get nervous about anything. One of the coolest customers in soccer. <laughs> In my years with him, you'd look at him on a sideline. You could never tell if he's winning by three or losing by three. He was always. But when Michael was playing and then with Michael's coach, and he's like a cat in a room full of rocket really? chairs, he, yeah, he won't sit down. And it, it's, uh, it's an active time. It's exciting. Did you, uh, when Mike was playing in Liga Mex down in Mexico, did you go and watch him play down there? I think I went down there one time. Yeah, he, he was there more than a year or two or mm -hmm. whatever. I, I think it was two or three seasons. Two or three seasons, about that you know. Uh, so that, that was an interesting thing. Uh, I didn't know what anybody was talking to uh, talking about on the street. You know, it, it was all over my head there. But it, it was. It, 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 it's great. The game down there is highly respected for. Um, technical stuff yeah and they were very very well pleased when he was down there and i was happy to see that it has to be exciting i mean uh and you were a south sider south st louis and a uh, firefighter is a little bit more of your background uh and then uh then you got into coaching and then started doing it more um what is something that uh, you want to share with, with our viewers about a little bit something about you outside of the game of soccer? Boy, my life doesn't go far outside of the game of soccer, really. Um, I, 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 I didn't really set out to be a coach. You know, you said when I started, a, I, I really started uh, when I was much younger and I was playing. And a, a gentleman from a, a, a parish in South St. Louis uh, asked me if I'd come out and help him with a, a, a parish that was just starting up a program. And he had a group of kids that were about seven years old or eight, whatever it was, I don't know, and said, would I come and help him? 
So I did that, and it turned out that they were very good players in a short time with a little bit of help. Uh, their, their parents had been active in sports before they were born, and uh, we, we were reasonably successful there. And when those kids became going into high school, became the age to be going into high school, uh, the, the gentleman that talked to me in the first place, his son was going to one of the South, he was going to St. Mary's at the time, and he, St. Mary's had an opening. <laughs> And he must have talked to the brothers at the school or something. And so they asked me to come over there, and I did that for two years over over there. But then uh, they came in with some technical rule that said you had to be a teacher or something to do it. So that set me down for a short time. And then the job opened at uh, Flow Valley. I went out and talked to them. I had no idea I was going to be moving to North, Saint, North County. <laughs> and... Uh, <clears throat> Like I said, it was just the right time to be getting, be getting up there because that neighborhood, we there was South End was turning them out too, but not in the numbers. Mm-hmm. My God, the numbers that were coming out of the North End was tremendous. That were just great players, and I, I was uh, a beneficiary of that. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, the last question I have for you that affects, you know, is an opinion about soccer in St. Louis. And we know the game hasn't changed. But what has changed is the pay-to-play model. Uh, what is your thought on uh, kids getting out and playing versus kids getting out and paying? Well, the, the biggest difference is the, the, the development of the kids. It seems like if when you read the background of the great players – of the world, they all say the same thing, that they learned the game in their neighborhood or in their street or wherever it was. They picked it up when they were five years old and that's all they've done and everything like that. Where over here, we don't have that. We've got all the sports. You know, the kids over here are playing everything. So they're not putting that much time into it. But that is where the game is being developed in the the things that make them great players. You don't get any of that in scrimmage. Uh, they're playing all the time, and all the different little things that can come up in a game happen in the backyard or the yard or wherever you're playing, and they've figured out how to handle that and how to improve and, and everything like that. So uh, that that's the thing that builds the game. You, what you get out of a book Everybody's doing the same thing, you know. But when they're when they're playing on their own, you're playing in different age groups. You're playing. You're only 12 years old. And you're playing with guys that are 16, or when you're 16, you're playing with guys that are 25, and everything like that. And you're you're learning all the things that make you a player in the game. Everybody doesn't reach that height because that brings it out. Because you have to, you you can't cover everything in practice. What you're going to do in a game, it it, it has to, you have to solve it when it when it comes up, you know, and uh, that's that's the thing that's holding us back. We don't have that playing in the street situation or in the park or on a lot or something like that that we had in those days. So that's holding us back. But over in Europe and every place, they're still doing the same thing. So we're having a hard time catching up. And we're, the United States is losing a lot of quality players through the simple fact of economics, that they can't afford to pay the club fees and that, and, and so they go to something else. And uh, I think if we can harness that, we should take over the world. I agree. And I'm, I'm grateful to be connected to you through Matt and uh, getting Matt on our staff and every staff that's been a part of the program. Uh, it's been amazing uh, being at St. Louis Community College and, and with your what you built is inspiring our team right now. Matt can tell you, like we're very we're trying to maybe potentially get that star back, uh, add another star to what you've been building, your legacy, and so that we can try to keep that thing going. And that's my personal motivation uh, is to help those kids at the same time we're trying to re, revamp what you have built many years ago and give you that. Uh, acknowledgement because I just think it's amazing and it's so hard to win a championship much less 10 and uh, so thank you for coming on the show and and we hope to have you 
back this summer multiple times and uh, have you maybe do the coaches' breakdowns with me. There's so much I, uh, I'd want to ask you, but it's a limited time show. But I just want to thank you guys for coming on the show today. Well, it's my Glad pleasure. To, Glad to be here. Thank Glad you. For having us. And that wraps up our community segment. We will see you next week on Atletico TV.